off with the colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Hi friends Getting ready for Abby's appointment today with her surgeon over at Children's Hospital and I keep having to make sure that the travel time <laughs> is what it is and I make sure I leave on time but I'm a little, a little nervous I don't want to I don't know I worry that I've been too optimistic but I also want to help motivate Abby so it's been a tricky place to be in she's getting ready you can hear Jason getting ready behind me it is almost seven o'clock in the morning I did not sleep well at all I think I probably fell asleep at 3 a.m. and woke up every hour leading up to my alarm at 6 30 so that's fantastic, right? Something between my teeth. So I might come home and take a nap. But I'm going to finish getting ready. And then um, we're going to go and find out. So in the second. Then I'm going. Okay. Send Abby a text. He wasn't going to the back. He was just brushing hair while <laughs> blowing his nose. I know you're in the bathroom. You weren't going to the bathroom, though. Send Abby a text, like, wishing, wishing her luck. Okay, well, let me come say goodbye. Hurry quick. Gotta go. We just got here. You a little nervous? No. Just okay. really tired. Yeah, we're very tired. All right, we are. We made it in plenty of time. We need to go check in in four minutes. So that's your. Oh, that's fine. Um, so perfect timing. And uh, let's go see what they say. <laughs> Okay, do you want me to tell the results or do you want to? Yeah, I'm not going to. You're not going to? I'm not going to film her now. Um, just because she said she doesn't want to. And she didn't want me to film her reaction either. So, good news is that <laughs> I won't cry in front of Abby because I don't want to like embarrass her, but um, we got the okay, right? Yeah. We are going to do it this um, winter. Um, over uh, her winter break for her college courses. It won't quite be the end of your high school classes. Well, they don't end until like yeah. but yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised and yet not surprised. Um, he's gonna double check with the orthodontist to make sure that the orthodontist is um, ready to go by then with what work she's got to do because she's got to put one more wire in yeah. um, to like be able to do the surgery and make sure that, that Abby is in line to, to go for that wire. And then they have to file for an extension on our insurance approval 
because we're gonna go over this, I don't even know what it was, six month or whatever mark for the initial insurance approval. And once those two things are done, we will be able to schedule the surgery. Um, luckily for Abby, she has stacked her high school schedule really, really well to have two easy classes and one hard class that she can do from home. Well, ceramics you can do from home, but like- I can't do any of it from home. No, but like you can do stuff from your book yeah. from home. Yeah. And you have a very good, like your teacher knows you, knows you, like what things you can do from home. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then your BC classes will be easy, to, well, they'll be done. Most of December is off Yeah. for her college courses. She's doing Running Star for those of you who are new to this. So very good news and we're gonna call dad really quick before we hop on the road and go home because he's obviously like wanting to know an update. Hey, hey, how's it going? Uh, good, how you doing? Good, just uh, doing some data entry on the bill. Okay, do you wanna tell dad? They, um, well, he set like a, I don't even know. Tell him, tell him yes or no. Well, yeah, he said we could have surgery in like December or something. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so they just have to get you on the schedule? Yeah. They yeah, we're, uh, we're excited. I think we're just letting it like sit in, right? I don't know. It's. Well, at this point. It's sort of like, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little hesitant on the orthodontist, to be honest. She always has a problem with everything. I know, but she has told me like twice now, the last two appointments, that she loves the, the um, movement. I don't know what else she would want. Today. I know, I don't There's know what else, else she would want. Can go. Yeah, because she doesn't need to, and even the orthodontist said, the teeth don't need to move any closer together. He's like, you don't need to have the, fit, the work finished on the gaps in between the teeth. He's like, I like how they look now. And I don't know why she would need them to be any closer. I just need her to be in line with putting in that wire to get prepped for surgery. So if he's okay, he didn't mention it, but he, but if he's okay with the gap in your jaw, there shouldn't yeah. be any problem for her. No, she's just picky. Awesome. celebrate our good news and to give her something good to eat that's soft and liquid <laughs> because that's what she can do. We are here at Damba Juice and we're gonna get her a smoothie for breakfast. Hey Dana. Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. What can I do for you, Chris? Get well, I just have news about Abby's surgery. Oh, okay. What? We are good to go for December. December, huh? Yeah. Wow. I know. Isn't that neat? It is. It truly is. Yeah. I am sitting here in the parking lot after dropping Ashley off at Cheer, and I'm waiting for traffic to die down before bothering to go home. So, Jason's on his way home from work. I'm excited to have him, like, give Abby a big, huge hug. They're daddy's girls, 100%. It's been a good day. I've been able to have, like, really fun conversations with my dad, my sister, my twin sister. It sounds crazy to be so excited for a massive, life-changing surgery. Um, so in case you guys are new here, I'm wondering why we're so excited for surgery. Um, I thought I would give you a quick synopsis of what this surgery entails and why we need to do it and why we're so excited at this point in time. So Abby is 16. She just turned 16, but a, probably about three years ago, we took her to the orthodontist and expecting to like get a timeline for when we could get braces on. We had a lot of jaw pain and her teeth are all like, you know, put on a lot of pressure in her jaw. Let's go ahead and get braces on and get them all into the right place. And maybe that will cause some of that jaw pain to go away. Immediately, the orthodontist was like, yeah, that's 
not gonna happen. As is the case with everything in Abby's life, everything gets put on hold. They discovered that she has the same genetic jaw disorder, not disorder, gen genetic makeup of the jaw being in the incorrect place inside her mouth. My father has the same genetic, came from my side of the family. My older brother has had this surgery and my niece, my oldest brother's daughter, she has the same problem and has had this surgery. So the jaw is not in the right place. It didn't, they weren't born with it genetically. And so that is putting the pressure on her jaw. Then when you have extra pain and extra pressure, we think, although it's not a direct, like the doctors have never given us a definitive, even the surgeon like a definitive, I guess that's what's causing her neck tension and her back pain. When you have massive pain for years and years and years, you, you have to hold the tension in other locations, which then puts stress and pain in those areas. So progressively, I think that's where a lot of her pain has come from. That being said, the only way to fix this problem is surgery, but you need to be done growing. And as we have learned, the teeth themselves need Need to be aligned as good as possible. We don't need to be the, have them be perfectly straight. And then there needs to be a big enough gap in the jawbone back here in order to go ahead and go for surgery. And I'll explain the surgery in just a second. Um, and that's where our snafu has been in the past six months is we found out that those two things were not ready for Abby when we thought we were going to have surgery this summer. Like we thought she would be done and healing, getting ready to go back to school. Um, and instead, we haven't even done the surgery. So the surgery in, in a quick synopsis itself, the surgeon goes in, breaks the jawbone, resets the jaw where it should be, and luckily for her, it is the, her bones are growing in the direction that um, uh, her jaw will be set. So everything will grow at the route, at the correct pace. Even if her jaw bones are done growing, her body might not be fully done growing. And you can check that from an x-ray in your hand. Um, my father is a doctor, so I've gone through all of this kind of stuff. And I've gone through it with my orthodontist back home, who was my orthodontist growing up. We've kind of talked about this with multiple doctors. But because her growth bones, her growth plate, if you will, is growing in the direction of growth, they aren't worried about it. So they break the jaw, split it, reset it into the correct location. Now, because they're putting it into a no, new location, that means that your cheekbone, your um, chin bones, your nose, your like everything in your face is now a little out of whack. It's not as it should be. So we have a consult appointment beforehand, about three or four weeks beforehand, and we design a new face for Abby. She gets to design it. She'll sit down with the doctor and she will be able to digitally um, design what she would like her face to be. Not to say that it's not beautiful the way it is, but it will change. And so does she want her cheekbones, her job, you know, cheekbones to be higher, lower, more defined? Does she want anything done with her chin? Is there a little bump that she wants to take out of her chin? Does she want it to be narrower? Um, she does have a bump on her nose. And so the doctor is going to go in and take out a, her deviated septum. And that way, he can have access insurance wise to access her nose and take out the bump on the top of her nose when he's taking out the deviated septum. So she gets to do all of that, but that's very, very invasive. Um, in fact, this, the, the, what do you call it? The scan that they did today of her jaw is likely, well, actually he did say today that it will be the images that he is going to go and use right now to start designing her new jaw. He's going to take those images and he'll be able to digitally alter them and put the jaw where it belongs and then he will be able to digitally start to see what we need to do structurally for the rest of Abby's face. He literally got those scans today. It's just amazing. Like, it's just absolutely amazing what they can do digitally with her actual face structure. The recovery of that surgery is intense and I don't even know obviously like I wasn't around my brother or my niece when they had this surgery um, and I don't know that I necessarily want to know too many more details because I got some today from my sister because she went and visited my brother in the hospital the first he was only in the hospital for one day which I'll talk about for Abby but she's like yeah this is not an easy surgery it's intense the reason why the orthodontist wants to have a certain wire in her braces it's really strong wire it's because she's wired shut during the surgery she's completely wired shut she can't move her jaw those bones 
bones need to fully set. Everything in the face needs to fully set after being altered. And that will be for four to six weeks, depending on how quickly her body recovers. She'll be on a liquid diet um, through a straw, through likely just a little whole section of her mouth. Um, it's going to be very rough, which is why we've been practicing with smoothies and protein ice cream and juicing and you know all these kinds of things because she will be going to a liquid diet this winter and her teeth are already so sore so it's already like helpful to be thinking about this and helping her now with it um because abby has had chronic pain for a very large portion of her childhood i guess she's had back pain neck pain jaw pain teeth pain now with the braces we've learned that she does not metabolize pain medication like normal people do she metabolizes it like this and it's other people metabolize it this slow. She metabolizes so, so fast. And so you don't, say you take Tylenol and Ibuprofen and you try and overlap them. It's four hour medication, six hour medication. And you try and overlap that so you don't have a gap in pain um, from the pain medications. This one will wear off after two hours and this one is going to wear after, I don't know, three hours. And so she has a gap in pain management. And we don't know, we haven't ever been able to figure out what that timing is. Like how fast does she, you know, metabolize ibuprofen versus tile? Like we don't know. So what the surgeon is going to do, and we'll go into more detail as we get, as we are on surgery day, but he has already asked a cranial anesthesiologist to be on our team for her surgery. He is a pediatric anesthesiologist, but he also specializes in this cranial cranial surgery um, and he also specializes in extra pain management for chronic pain children which is absolutely stunning to me and sad at the same time to think that so many kids are in chronic pain sorry um the reason why we're so excited about this surgery is to get her out of this chronic pain despite how hard it's gonna be to recover from this surgery. It gives us such hope to get rid of so many items of pain for her. She'll have her braces off soon after surgery, within like six months to a year. She'll be done with her braces, she'll have a new face, she'll have a new smile, and hopefully get rid of, getting rid of this jaw pain will relieve the tension and stress in her neck and in her back, and we can get rid of that. And I think it's just gonna make her such a happy person right now. She's holding her stress and anxiety in her neck and shoulders all the time. Going back to the pain management um, situation, because we don't know how she metabolizes pain meds, um, the doctor has agreed, and I love him for this. He is going to keep her in the hospital for a couple days. He says, I don't care what insurance says. This is my call. She's my patient, and I would rather monitor her if she's on narcotics, I would, and we're gonna put those through an IV. We're not gonna let her feel pain. She's gonna have a constant drip of pain medications, whatever it may be. And I don't want her to get addicted to pain meds from the NARC, so I'm. he's working with the cranial um, anesthesiologist to probably very similar to my nerve block that I received during my surgery from my anesthesiologist. They're gonna do something very similar for her, and they're gonna give her something during surgery so that she actually Actually is not in pain for two to three days after surgery when normally you would be and you would have be having to take the Tylenol and the ibuprofen and the, and the narcotic and the oxy and, or whatever they would do for children. To be able to do that for her and get her situated in a hospital taken care of by the nurses is just a blessing in disguise so that I can take care of her mentally and emotionally by her bed and the doctors and the nurses can take care of her physically because um, this is an unknown thing for all of us. We don't know how to do this and how to take care of her and I would really like those first days to have help. I've, I've learned, I'm not gonna tell her this, but I've learned that you end up swallowing a lot of blood because you're, it, you've had surgery on your mouth. So that's just what happens. There's no other way to drain blood. <laughs> but you swallow it, which then if you ever have swallowed blood, it makes you throw up or she's wired shut. Think about that scenario. It's not good. Happened to my brother in the hospital and it's, it's my sister came into that situation in the room and she was like, Dana, I, I need her to stay in the hospital and have her taken care of by other people. They need to be able to help that. They need to be able to suction her mouth and help her um, so that she doesn't have to deal with that. It's a big, you know, set of information, but a lot of you haven't either watched the videos that we've done explaining this surgery or you're new here. And I just wanted you to understand that while we're so excited, sorry, <laughs> um, for this surgery, um, it's because we want our child to be out of pain. I just don't want her to like have to deal with this anymore. Um, let's see if I can lower this. <laughs> 
back down. So that's it. Uh, I might have Jason put his thoughts in here, but I've already now made this a little bit too long. So wish her luck. We will hopefully schedule that surgery soon. I will let you guys know when that is so you can be thinking of her and praying for her in whatever ways that you do. Thank you for all you've done for us and our family, supporting us, uh, making it possible for me to be able to stay home and do this and provide a little bit of income and sanity for myself to be able to take care of my kids and be there for them. I appreciate you guys and I will see you guys next time. Easy, easy on our tiptoes.